that was the beginning really of of my entry into that space and i i spent nearly a decade with the taj of course after the training i came back into sales and marketing which is what my department was okay and and then i moved with the taj and finally i landed in bangalore with the taj and in my last position i used to head sales uh, you know sales out of bangalore i used to head the team and all of that okay and um, some way along the way uh, you know i wanted to uh, be an entrepreneur of the the hospitality space loved food and beverage okay. but i wanted a larger canvas you know when you're with one organization you you have to see things only through that perspective but i wanted to kind of you know have a larger canvas and and so i decided to move out move on and w- what really happened was that uh, this was around you know this was in 2001 when i decided to move on from the taj and and that day that year that time you know dot coms were big portals Correct. right that you know that was when india dot com and all of that happened and so my objective was to get, set up a portal for the industry for food and beverage and all of that okay. and that's why i got out and and then i you know uh, i i went overseas i went to the us okay. spent some time there and and got things go- together to set up my you know portal for the hospital for the hospitality food and beverage industry okay. but then what happened was 911 happened oh yeah so 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 okay. whatever what i'd worked on all that came back to that's what happened to me so uh, i had two options i could go back to the taj or i could you know start something of my own i said you know uh, you know i was about 29 30 then and you know there's a phrase right young and foolish and um, so i just said okay fine you know i'm out here what do i do let me try and see what i can do and i loved food loved travel and loved photography and i used to read a lot of foreign food magazines mm-hmm. you know uh, gourmet traveler gourmet gourmet australia food and wine all of that okay. and i just said you know why don't i try my hand at publishing a magazine and my whole philosophy right from a very early stage has been that i don't want to commercialize journalism you know i didn't believe in that oh, okay. i didn't believe in going going to a restaurant and saying hey you know what this is what we can write about you and so which meant that uh, you know even today we have a line and that dharma, that phrase is truth in food so oh. whatever i speak for in my videos i should be able to stand by it uh now okay. it may so happen that let's say what i may like you may not completely like or let's say what you may like i may not particularly like completely but that's the thing about food right food is uh, to each his own you know right what what is one man's food is another man's poison as they say so right. but when i speak for that food i should speak for it with all honesty i should speak for it with nothing clouding my judgment so even when we were doing the magazine that was the whole uh, philosophy and our line then was truth in food wine and dining okay. today we've taken that and it's truth in food so ah. anyway long story short so we did the magazine did fairly well uh, okay. as a niche publication but somewhere along the line i realized that you know you you would let's say have 100000 readers at the most let's say doing a 20000 uh copy print run you know each copy let's say is read by five people or whatever but i just felt that was so limiting and that's why about four years ago we went completely digital and we set up food lovers dot in and uh, when we set up that website uh, we were very focused on one thing was video because i believe that you know video is something that is very uh, is you know people can consume it very passively right i, I don't need to spend time uh, reading or try i i just have to op- have as i have to click on it and these days you don't even have to click on it when it scrolls it starts playing right in 3 seconds right so uh, it, so i just felt that video was important and so when we went digital about 3 4 years ago we set up our own video production team in house 
because i had a certain uh, you know way of looking at it like i looked at the magazine so that same sensibility i carried into digital so we set up a video team and uh, so we began first with a website foodlovers.in and along the way we also started cultivating our social handles so we you know as you know we are quite uh, big today on facebook of course okay. youtube is a more recent journey but facebook we've been on it for a fairly long time mm-hmm. and today i think on facebook um, i think we have close to about half a million active followers on on the food lovers uh, you know magazine page so okay. while the website was fine i always knew that the website will be limiting because you know my whole challenge with the food lovers dot in kind of a model was that people have to click and go there whereas you know people are already on social media they're already on facebook they're already on instagram they're already on youtube so if you can get your content at that place where they already are without them having to look elsewhere so i was always a big believer in these sort of platforms more than our captive website okay and uh, so we but at the same time we started cultivating video we started producing videos and just to give you a sense uh, in the last maybe 4 years we produced about 500 short videos on food wine and dining i uh, want you know 500 500 short wow. videos on food wine and dining in the last 4 uh, years four and years. Uh, so the the only difference was that in all those videos i was behind the scenes i was directing i was you know putting it all together so people knew that i was the managing editor i was the publisher the founder etc but i was never really occupying center stage in front of the camera i think somewhere along the line i think this has uh, you know struck a chord with our viewers and so we started seeing a huge growth so for okay. instance in youtube i think last march we were 3000 subscribers okay. last march okay. and today uh, we are at 330000 subscribers okay. so you know and <laughs> it's it, i mean it's just insane uh, i was just looking at this month i think on on youtube we've done about 6 and a half million views this month on youtube alone on okay. facebook it's another 20 million views so i okay. just feel that and all of this is organic last march we decided to april not i mean i just wanted to do something different basically and also you know have a larger impact and we started releasing a gourmet on the road Mm-hmm. and that just caught on for some reason i think people like the honesty of the show people like the fact that it was not gimmicky it was not celebrity based food was the hero the really? cooks who are dishing out the food they were the heroes i was merely the storyteller really? you know that's that's all that i do people say i'm a food critic or whatever but you know uh, yeah you know conventionally people may call me that but i think i'm more of a food whisperer you know that's the that's my whole objective that's because better- i don't know sorry a better word better than a critic it's called a food whisperer is a better word i mean <laughs> better food than whisper. a critic yeah, yeah you know i think a critic can be judgmental and i feel that sometimes we are too judgmental in this uh, in this world because you know it, it comes back to that same thing uh, you know I, i think sometimes people tend to be very polarized in opinions but i feel that so for instance if i'm if i'm uh tasting a particular dish right yeah now that dish is appreciated by hundreds of people it may not appeal to my palate entirely mm-hmm. but i need to appreciate that dish for what it means to people right you know because otherwise imagine if as a food critic if i only go around and i say oh i like this i don't like this i like this i don't like this that means i'm not speaking for the food i'm speaking for myself right 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 you know and so that's my whole objective when i when it comes to food and that's why i think i speak for the food whatever is happening i think is 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 all organic so i think people like what they see they like the stories that we tell and that's it i think that's i think that's the reason why we are here today wow. and okay. yeah sorry i mean i just tend to ramble on 
I wanted to I wanted to get you in that group so that I just have to listen. Basically, so right. I'll get, I needed that. It's not that you answer my questions or anything like that. I just want to know. Okay. Made you do the leap to digital and it's connected so well to the people. Yeah. That is, and and you're saying it's all organic, so you're not been promoting and it's unbelievable. It's, I don't have I don't have the resources to promote uh, Bolu because. I wanted to now tell those stories in my way. And that's what prompted, got me on the road. And so last March, March 2019, I just put my team together, you know, uh, four of us, five of us. We okay. got into a car and I said, let's drive. We just okay. drove to Mangalore. We didn't okay. have any plan agenda. Went okay. there, spent a week, found a place to stay. And we started filming. And we filmed... Uh, the first 10 or 11 episodes of Gormi on the Road, the Manglo series. Because my, I, I want to, before this meeting is over, I want to tell you, I'm a Malu by heart. I mean, from my okay. land, I'm from, I'm from Kollam, K O L L A M. And, Kolam, uh, of course. Kolam. Uh, so Kolam, according to me, like a passionate Kolam guy, is we are more historically important than Trivandrum or Cochin. I've seen your Calicut yeah. videos. So we would like to extend all help to you if ever you are going to Kolam on your shoot. Okay. I would, I would certainly love to uh, go to Kolam. In fact, uh, of course, the current situation has put a huge spanner in the works. Okay. But, uh, you know, our objective with Food Lovers TV and Gourmet on the Road is really to travel across the country. I know. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, showcase food. And Kerala has so much richness. And I've heard of Kollam. Uh, okay. You know, and uh, definitely something that I, definitely a destination that I plan to Another explore input. at some point. People may be pushing Kollam too much, but uh, Kollam is known as a mutton town. Okay, mutton town. Mutton town, okay. And if you go all across Kerala, the district, it's all about mutton. Like you say, any any Kerala guy you go, you get a, you get a, you get a parota and beef fry anywhere. No, in Kollam you will not get. Why is that? Because of the Arab Persian. So we are a very Islamic town. So there are some iconic small places in Kollam where you can get the mutton and the parota the best way. And we also have a bakery which is 100 years old. A 100 year old bakery. Wow. I saw your bakery series on... Uh, what is that? I noted that down also. I think that's in JP Nagar. The, the bakery. Uh, the one Lal Bagh. Lal Bagh. Sri Jayalakshmi. Yeah, yeah Jayalakshmi. Now, this bakery is Crown Bakery. But just to keep you in the loop, Crown Bakery is 100 years old. 100 years old. They are a 100 year old legacy now. And, uh, you know, so these are places in Kollam which you will really love. The, the, the kind of stuff what you're doing. So I see your Calicut. Yeah. Have you reached Cochin or you only stopped at no, Calicut? No, I haven't. No, we kind of uh, went to Calicut and then uh, our next uh, thing was to look at Cochin. Cochin, uh, Kochi okay. was the, yeah, you know, Fort Cochi, uh, mut, you know, yeah. Mutton Cherry and um, the backwaters. Yeah. Uh, so there's so many stories that I want to do there. Correct. Uh, and yeah, so that's where it is. Um, I think people are more aware today about food. People yeah. are exploring more in the kitchen. So I think the timing of your column is perfect. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, Kripal, I think we're. I think we are. You're a busy guy. I, I'm sure you're a lot of. I was wondering up there, wondering how you keep in touch with all the comments and everything <laughs> on the digital platform. You know, how do you manage to do it? Uh, do you reply? Do you have a team to reply, or do you? I've got to keep because everybody likes to comment. And if somebody responds, it will be great. Yeah, so what we do is that, so, you know, we have a very small team. But, wow. uh, you know, but I look at every comment, every uh, message, etc. that comes to me. Because that is, you know, it's like a circle, right? So when I 
produce when i do a show i also need to know how people are responding to that show right so you know and to me it doesn't feel like work you know so if whenever i get a few moments i may be out on a ride but let's say when i stop and somebody is fueling up you know i'm looking at what's happening so to me that line between work and my life is very blurred it's it there's no line actually it's all uh it's all intertwined so the food lovers food lovers actually and, food lovers. and you are you are heading the you, we are very lucky to have you on the on board first time and i hope no, i can I, get it off well no, i'm sure you will you know food is such a universal um, believable yeah it's a universal language right i mean um, i think it, it doesn't matter where you come from what your background is etc mm -hmm. etc et when it comes to food i think everybody connects on the same level i think that's the beautiful thing about food and i think what's also interesting especially since you're covering now home chefs and gourmands and connoisseurs is the fact that in this last 3 months or 4 months when life has taken a reset Correct. I think a lot of people have gone back to food. I get to um, see it because uh, that also feeds me. Like I said, I find inspiration in what people write to me. That also keeps me motivated. Okay. So. you know uh, just the fact that somebody sitting in australia or somebody sitting somewhere uh, you know i had uh, there was once a person who wrote to me from paris okay. and this was in response to my i did a show on the fish on the mangalore bandar this is a place where all the seafood comes in all the boats oh, unload correct. the fish correct yeah. so yeah. this gentleman wrote to me from paris and he said when i watched this i had tears in my eyes because this took me back about 40 years when my mom used to hold my hand and take me to that place to buy fish and i sent this video to my mom who's now in bombay and she is ill and frail but when she watched it she had you know tears in her eyes and so i just to me that you know that kind of gets me thinking about what should i do be doing next So that's the only thing that feeds you. That's the only thing that fuels your passion. Okay. It's not about the commercial See, aspect of it or the fact that you're doing so many millions of views, etc. But the fact that these videos touch somebody somewhere, I think that's the um, yeah. that's the best best thing about it. So I'll uh, wind up on on behalf of the Daily Brunch from that young 21 year old who uh, went to the Taj for a small brochure hearing has ended up yeah. in that long journey. and definitely we will catch up because we definitely would like you to come to kollam and we would sure. extend anything for you for your team whatever input you want we will sure now that we know what you are looking for if you tell us what you want we can do it for you kollam kollam k o l l a m very much thank you thank you thank you for this opportunity thank you See thank you, you. bye bye god bless you god bless